Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site, for podcasts, dwyerboxingnews.com, also free. Let's talk about the NFL, just some early betting strategies on the upcoming season. Today is Monday, August the 2nd, 2021. Carson Wentz apparently is about to undergo surgery. The prognosis is he's going to be out for 5 to 12 weeks. That story is just breaking. Let's talk about teams that, to me, are viable. Let's talk about the way I play things, the NFL futures market. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, you know, I'm not against betting on individual games. If you see a huge deal that you want to jump on, hey, go for it. It's your money. But I'm just telling you that more times than not, betting on individual games is a fool's errand, right? If you win, let's say on the point spread, you're getting a minus 110 most of the time, right? It's very hard to beat the casino. You go 50-50, you're losing on the year because you're losing the VIG, right? What I've found is that it's better to play NFL futures. And let me just tell you, most people are going to say you're crazy. The house has the biggest edge on NFL futures. Well, that's because most gamblers don't play it like chess, right? Most of them are just picking their home team, right? I'm a New York Giants fan. Most of them are just saying, hey, I hope the Giants win. Let me make this year more exciting, right? Or most of them are picking some team that drafted some player that's not going to figure out how to play quarterback his rookie year. But hope springs eternal, and they think they're going to be able to, you know, ride that team to a NFL championship. Well, no, that's not the way to play it. I believe the way to play NFL futures is to have a betting portfolio. Understand, your ultimate hope is to be completely hedged, to reach the Super Bowl, and to have outsized odds that you're not going to get anywhere else on quality teams. Ideally, you want to have both sides of the play. You want to certainly have one team. You want that team to be going off at substantially better odds than the market at that time is offering. Then you want to be able to throw money on the other team. So you're guaranteed a profit. You also want to play it so that you're making adjustments during the season. In other words, if you're wrong, if you were one of these people who thought Carson Wentz back with Frank Reich, the Colts looking good, right? If you put a futures down on the Colts, well, guess what? You have time now to look at the lay of the land, to find out how Wentz really responds to the surgery and then to pick other teams to cover your investment to continue to put yourself in the best possible position. Now, let's just name some teams right now that I'm going to put a position on. They have tough schedules. But I'm just telling you, I believe that the line is going to swing in my favor on some of these plays so much, so much, that I'll be in the catbird seat. Understand, if you pick a team at 25 to 1 to win it all, and that team shows promise, right? Let's say they become the story. Let's say they're 5 and 2 and on a roll. Right? Let's say that first round pick, that running back they picked, is better than expected. Let's say the structural advantage that they've always had is now publicly recognized. 
Well, that 25 to 1 team, by the time you get to the middle of the year, might be going off at 10 to 1. Right? Understand some of these other teams who you thought, you know, their price is too expensive in September. Well, by the time you get to November, you might be able to get them at 20 to 1. If you look at the schedule and you realize, wow, you know, if this injured player comes back and plays like he can, and if this team just plays up to its potential these next four games, they might be back in it, right? And so we want to play futures the whole year. Understand, there are opportunities in the futures market in mid-December. Right, last year, Tampa Bay really wasn't also ran until about halfway in the season. Then suddenly some guys who were afterthoughts, Leonard Fournette, for example, suddenly started playing up to capability. Right, other guys joined the team, Antonio Brown. Tom Brady suddenly starts clicking with people. I want you to look at the odds history on Tampa Bay last year. By the time the playoffs started, Tampa had one of the league's best offenses and one of the league's best defenses, and about 40% of the country had no idea that Tom Brady had a real shot because Tampa started the year slowly and everyone else was fixated on the Kansas City Chiefs, on the Green Bay Packers. So, okay, I've said my piece on futures. Let's talk about some futures plays I'm looking at on this, the second day of August. Now, going into the playoffs last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers were favored over the Cleveland Browns. Right? Justin Herbert, San Diego's quarterback, excuse me, the Los Angeles Charger quarterback, was a media darling. Everyone was raving about his touchdown to interception ratio. Right? Ben Roethlisberger was supposed to be too old. But yet, if you look at the stats, if you look at the touchdown to interception ratio, you'll find out that Ben was competitive with Justin Herbert. And Ben didn't have a running game. Well, let me just say this. Cleveland pulls the upset in a game featuring a lot of turnovers. A horrendous start by the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Steelers go from being favored in the game to falling off the betting grid. Well, would it surprise you to know that the Steelers had an elite defense last year. Elite. On profootballreference.com, and I'm naming a free site, right? I'm going to try to not name pay sites because I want people watching this video to be able to just look up the numbers. You'll be surprised how many great resources there are online. On profootballreference.com, the Steelers had a 4.4 DSRS defensive rating, the highest in the AFC. Right, folks, Steelers, elite defense. By the way, their defense, according to that metric, DSRS, was ranked third in the entire league behind the Rams, 6.2. And the Saints, 4.5. Now, it's incredible that the Steelers could have been favored in a playoff game, could have this defense, could have a Super Bowl winning quarterback, could have exactly one losing season in the last 21 under GM Kevin Colbert. Right? Understand, folks, Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. 
Now you want to talk about mispricings as I make this video on cloudbet.com. And I'm just naming a random Canadian site that has a developed list of props on whether individual teams are going to win the Super Bowl, right? They also have another set of props on whether individual teams are going to make the Super Bowl. Believe it or not, they have the Steelers on Monday, August the 2nd, 2021, going off at 38 to 1 to win it all. 38 to 1 on a team that just made the playoffs, on a team that had a good draft, picked up a running back. Folks, you got to be kidding me. Let me just say this too. 17 game season. Let's say Ben looked a little long in the tooth late last season. Well, I believe what's going to become the model is what the Saints have pioneered. Where you have a quarterback, Drew Brees, last year. In fact, Drew Brees the last few years. And teams will bring in a Teddy Bridgewater or a Jameis Winston to spell that quarterback. Taysom Hill for a number of games. Right? If the Steelers have a healthy Ben in mid-December, folks, they're going to be dangerous. You and I know that the Steelers have one of the best pass rushes in the entire NFL. If the Steeler defense plays as good as it did last year, this team shouldn't be 38 to 1. Hell, this team shouldn't be 20 to 1. The Steelers are a team I have a futures play on. Let's talk about another. You heard me mention the Saint defense. Folks, again, only one team in the NFC had a better DSRS rating than the Saints last year. It might shock you to know that the Saints also had an elite offensive rating. 5.1. Folks, they were 12-4 and four last year. Now I know, you're saying no Drew Brees. You're saying Michael Thomas is injured. I get it. Jameis Winston is a former Heisman Trophy winner. Jameis Winston is a former 5,000-yard passer. Sean Payton is a Super Bowl winning head coach. Right now on cloud bet, the Saints, elite defense, 12-4. Are going off at 26 to 1. 26 to 1 to win it all. People seem to forget Alvin Kamara. They seem to feel that Drew Brees was the only one on that team. Are you sure Brees was carrying the team or was the team carrying Drew Brees? Let's also realize, too, that right now is the time of year to take favorites. Right? If you get a reasonable price on a favorite, you need to realize that if this team lives up to potential, you're not going to get these odds in mid-November. So let's talk about a favorite, the Kansas City Chiefs. Now you saw them last year. They got roughed up in the Super Bowl. Let's be blunt. That's the second straight Super Bowl where Pat Mahomes had a subpar game. Let's remember. He's down by 10 two years ago in the fourth quarter against the San Francisco Giants. But understand what the Chiefs did this offseason. They added Orlando Brown and John Thune to their offensive line. So now you're giving Pat Mahomes, who has played in back-to-back -back Super Bowls, an offensive line to work behind. Guess what? He still has Travis Kelsey. Right? Well, you're getting a plus 450. Folks, good luck getting that in mid November. I believe a plus 450 is a great price for the Chiefs. Understand, you buy them here, you can forget about them. If they're doing well and they end up in the playoffs, right, you're really hoping that some team like the Steelers 
knocks them off in the playoffs, right? Let's face it. You'd rather get 38 to 1 odds than the plus 450, the 4.5 to 1 odds that you're getting on KC. But understand, you'll have KC covered at a multiple, 4.5. Let me also say, too, that if, in fact, KC looks like a monster, if Edwards Hilaire actually has a better sophomore year than his freshman year there, right? If the team survives the departure of Sammy Watkins and somebody else steps up, then you want to add to the position. But keep in mind, if all of that happens, the plus 450 is going to drop. So you will be advantaged by getting the plus 450 here, right? Good teams late in the year, you're going to get them at a plus 300. The margins are going to be tighter. Conversely, if you're watching a Chiefs game and suddenly Pat Mahomes is grabbing a knee, suddenly you're hearing that Mahomes might be out 5 to 12 weeks or Travis Kelsey, right? Then at that point, okay, you've spent enough on the Chiefs. Devote your betting dollars elsewhere. So the Chiefs are a team that I have a position on. Let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. Any team that has Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey with a 6.2 last year, DSRS on defense, the highest rating defensively, in the NFC, the highest, you need to have money on that team. Right, folks? That's an elite defense. Throw in the fact that Stan Kroenke is spending money. I understand they lost their running back. But running back is that oddball position where you can find guys. Right? I want people to consider the idea that Jared Goff might have held this team back and that if Matthew Stafford, a former first pick in the draft who's had statistically some great numbers, plays above average football, this team might easily win 11 or 12 games. I believe, by the way, that they play in the best division in football the best, right? I don't believe it's the NFC North. I believe this is the best division in football. Well, the Rams, with this loaded defense, you're getting double-digit leverage, 12 to 1. Today, on the Rams, on CloudBet. Let's talk about a team that was in the Super Bowl two years ago, in the Rams division the most injured team in the league last year. Well, folks, just understand that the Niners, even last year, when the team looked like a hospital ward, had a great defense, right? Just understand, they have an absolutely loaded roster. Folks, it's loaded. You have Jimmy G back, now I agree. Jimmy G is one of these guys who ends up on the injured list more than he should. I'll agree with that. But understand, Jimmy G blew out. Blew out the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs two years ago. Look at the Niners against Minnesota in the playoffs two years ago after Minnesota beat the Saints. Right, folks? When this team is on, they are on. They're going off at 12 to 1. By the way, reports out of camp say that Trey Lance, and I hope Trey Lance doesn't play early, right? I believe Jimmy G, look at Jimmy G's winning percentage. I believe Jimmy G gives this team the best chance to win. I think first year rookies always look good in training camp. Then they find out that this is not college ball. 
Trey Lance needs to be on the sideline for now, but just understand, the Niners are loaded at quarterback. Right? Trey Lance already is one of the better athletes at the position. Pinpoint passer, third pick in the NFL draft. Right? The Niners are going off at 12 to 1. I think you need to look hard at the NFC West. Let me say this too. And I know this is not how many people see it. In my opinion, the Seattle Seahawks have the second best quarterback in the league behind Aaron Rodgers. Right? There are very few players in this game who I believe can win games on their own. One of them is Russell Wilson. Let me say this too. I know we look at Seattle and people are concerned about the GM and we always say, oh, you know, is the team going to actually give Russell Wilson high-powered players to work with? Occasionally a DK Metcalf pops up out of nowhere and is better than advertised. Folks, last year, Seattle had a great offense. Great. Last year, Seattle had great special teams. Last year, Seattle finished 12 and 4. 12 and 4. And believe it or not, with Russell Wilson, the very next year after a 12 and 4 season, you're getting Seattle at 26 to 1. To win it all. That's a must. Let's talk about the team that I consider to have the best player in the league. Right? Well, put it this way. We'll say the best offensive player. I'll, I'll give Aaron Donald some respect here. But uh, Aaron Rodgers, to me, is the best. Folks, I've watched a lot of quarterbacks. Right? I was in the Bay Area during the Montana era. Right, Understand, Rodgers is historical. Let's get the record straight. The last two years, Rodgers has had his team in the NFC Championship game. Understand, the stuff Rodgers is doing right now, and I don't care how old he is, performance trumps whatever numbers out there. Rodgers right now is historical with the touchdown-interception ratio. There hasn't been anything like it. I would encourage people to look at Rodgers' touchdown-interception ratio over the last two years. I'm not talking about a Nick Foles 27 TDs, two-pick season. No, I'm talking about Rodgers. Really, after establishing himself as a Hall of Famer, putting an exclamation point at the end of his career. Well, understand, in my opinion, they have no real competition in the division. We'll see if Minnesota, with guys like Patrick Peterson, can compete. I have my doubts, even though I'm a big fan of the coach there, Zimmer. Right? But Green Bay has no real competition in the division. I get the feeling that Rodgers understands he needs that second Super Bowl to be talked about as lovingly as a Peyton Manning or a Joe Montana who has four, right? Um, right now, you're somehow able to get Green Bay at 11 to 1. Folks, how are you going to get these odds again? Green Bay hosted, hosted the NFC Championship game last year. Finally, and understand, these lists are made to be augmented and played with and stuff like that. Let me just say, finally, looks like I'm missing a sheet. We'll just wing it here. You have to have some money on the reigning Super Bowl champs, especially at these odds. They're giving you something like 6-1 to one on Tampa Bay, right? I love Tom. In my opinion, he's not Rodgers. He's not Wilson, 
right? But he has a loaded team to work with. He has a loaded defense to work with. He has a gifted group of wide receivers. And you should be very afraid of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they weren't that good the first half of last year. They just weren't. I believe at one point I came here online and I said, take the under on the win total for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then they hit the switch. And just understand the psychology of the team. You have a lot of guys on that team who feel that this is their one chance. Right? The team is loaded because guys have left money on the table. Right? Leonard Fournette who was a major contributor in the playoffs last year. Couldn't cut it in Jacksonville. Think about that. Right? Antonio Brown, future Hall of Famer, scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. By the way, he was in New England for five minutes. He scored a touchdown during his brief New England stint. His name got dragged through the mud. He was involved, unfortunately, in some unfortunate off-the-field incidences. Right? He was sued. He was in trouble. Quite frankly, despite a Hall of Fame career, his career was in jeopardy. He joins the team in the middle of last year, and he and Tom started to click. Now, you allow Tom Brady to be with the same team. Folks, they're bringing the band back. From the start of the season, where the guys themselves know Tom better, right? There's incredible credibility, right? This group was together one year. Guess what? They won the Super Bowl, right? I'm guessing there are guys on that team who believe this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Now, I'll agree. You get to your mid-40s, the wheels can fall off the wagon awfully quick. I'll agree with that. But I will say the talent level and where this team is in terms of where they were a year ago suggests that you want to have a futures on Tampa Bay. Let me just say, when you're dealing with a team like Tampa, one of the favorites, you want to get them early. Right now, they're going off at something like 6 to 1 odds on cloudbet.com. Folks, if they jump out and if they're 7 and 1 after 8 weeks, you're not going to come close to getting those odds again. Right? Let's remember, too. Well, put it this way. Tampa's not playing in the NFC West. Right? They don't have the week-in and week-out battles that the Rams are going to have. Dealing with Arizona. Dealing with San Francisco. Dealing with the 49ers. Right? Um, they aren't going to have that. The Seahawks. So, you definitely want to get a taste of both teams that were in the Super Bowl last year. But you want to make sure you get a taste of the Saints at 26 to 1. Of Seattle at 26 to 1. And of the Pittsburgh Steelers at 38 to 1. Those are the futurist plays that interest me right now in early August. Yes, I've left some teams off the list. Right, Cleveland? I'm not, I'm not totally sold on right now. The Dallas Cowboys? Folks, it's August. Dak hardly played last year. And Dak already has a sore shoulder. Let me also say, too, you have a young monster in the Cowboys division. Folks, if that Washington football team's defense continues to develop, 
that defense might get the Redskins, excuse me, the Washington football team, to 10 wins. Right? So I'm not completely sold on the Dallas Cowboys. Let me say this, too. I understand Belichick had quite the offseason for the Patriots. And I also understand, you know, the Patriots get to play two games against the Jets. Get to play two games against Miami. Neither the Jets nor Miami have a quarterback with three full years of experience. Right? I, You know, I understand there's some other teams out there. The beauty of playing futures is during the season, after you see some of the teams, after you figure out whether Zach Wilson is a great player or not, right? After you get an opportunity to see units come together, like the Washington football team's defense did last year, you can then jump in the water, right? You're going to have... 17 weeks plus an additional playoff season to continually hedge and to continually shift resources. That's the beauty of playing NFL futures. Finally, I'm going to talk about baseball. I'm going to talk about football. I'm going to talk about short-term bets on my other site here on YouTube, bettingangle.us, right? This is the time of year that I jump into that site somewhat, right? But when there's a big event, a Super Bowl, for example, or playoff games, then I'll debut that video here on my Dwyer 70905 site. Of course, all of these videos will be condensed to podcasts on Dwyer Boxing News Dot com. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there's a team you think I'm underselling, if there's a team, I hear you Tennessee Titan fans, if there's a team out there that I haven't mentioned and you feel they're about to explode, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.